<clears throat> first off, really appreciate everybody coming out and uh, being here today and really jump starting or kicking off a another new basketball season here, the 2012-2013 season. Uh, really looking forward to it. Um, you know, we've got a great senior class led by uh, Isaiah Cannon and Ed Daniel, along with Brandon Garrett, uh, Stacy Wilson, and Latrez Mushot. That, you know, first and foremost, uh, you know, just speaking to them individually, what Isaiah and Ed have been able to do over the last three years here has been remarkable. It's probably been the best three-year run in the, you know, history of the school. And when, and when you talk about impact in this school and the university and the community, and they're 19 wins away uh, from tying the all-time uh, most wins in a regular, in a, in a regular season, all-time wins of Ivan, Juwan, and Dante from last year with 104. They're at 85 right now with three straight championships. So. But those two guys have meant more to this program just than just championships. You know, they take every, they take every picture with kids. They sign every autograph. They go to schools, nursing homes, uh, you know, the movies. I mean, they're everywhere. And you know, what I'm really looking forward to is to see the development of Stacy Wilson. I'm really excited about the season that he's going to have. He handled himself great last year, being the fifth guard on a tremendous team. Helped us win some big games early suffered some uh, an injury and a death in the family during the season, which set him back a little bit, but came back, had a really good game at Eastern Illinois. So looking forward to him uh, having a good year because he stayed grounded and really worked hard. And then, you know, Brandon Garrett has got to have a great year for us. Um, looking forward to seeing his progress and his growth. He went to China this summer uh, and had a chance to, you know, compete internationally and grow spiritually, you know, and, and and from a basketball standpoint. So Brandon will be a big key. And then, you know, I'm disappointed, uh, not more so for the team. Obviously, it's a huge loss for the team, but you hate when a fifth-year senior has to suffer a, and it's not a season-ending injury. You know, where he's doing great with his rehab in regards to Latrez. But right now, you know, when you say six months for him, that's the middle of January, end of February. So six months is probably the, the least amount of time to get back. So. You know, you think he comes back in early February, but for a fifth-year senior to have that, it's very tough uh, for the team, but for individually. And I think Latrez has really handled it extremely well. He's been positive with his workouts, and he's been positive in practice and trying to help and teach these younger guys. So I keep saying to tell him, to keep him motivated that, you know, hopefully February and March something good will happen for him, whether it's a tip-in, whether it's a game-winning shot. But he'll be better for this when he just from a life standpoint. And, when he leaves here, he'll graduate on time in May. Uh, when you look at the older group, there's not much in the middle right now uh, with the suspension of Zay Jackson. Uh, that's another, uh, obviously, a big blow to our basketball team who was a potential starter. And when you look at this last year, I think the second half of the season, Zay had a tremendous year for us. Uh, the average six, seven points in conference play, shot the basketball. Uh, well down the stretch and was a key key component you know when you're playing 20 minutes a game uh, on our team last year so you know but he's back in practice now and I think he adds to practice because he's got great leadership he's got great competitive spirit he's a great teammate and he wants to be a part of this program and he wants to win and at the end of the day uh, what happened to him does not define who he is and I hope everybody understands and knows that he made an awful mistake He's paying for that, and thank goodness no one was hurt. And now, you know, now we've got to get Zay back into a good situation, into his home, and, and get him better and, and help him as, long, as well as he can also help us. And then, then we're young, and then we're young. We're really young. We've got six freshmen and one newcomer in Dexter Fields. Excited about Dexter. I think he could be one of the premier shooters in the conference and one of the top defenders in the league. And he averaged eight points a game as a sophomore at UAB on an NCAA tournament team, so he knows what it takes. And we're going to look for his leadership, and it's got to expand more with the losses A. And then you've got six freshmen, which, you know, some days are good and some days are bad, and that's how it is when you have half your team as freshmen. And they've got to continue to grow, continue to get better. Which freshman's going to separate themselves? We haven't seen it yet. You know, hopefully the games will start deciphering that or, or, or making decisions on that. but. I like all six guys, they're great kids, compete hard, uh, do things the right way, and, and I think are going to be very good players here in time.
excited about our schedule. Uh, our schedule is extremely demanding. Uh, we've, we open up next Monday, and, and that's the challenge. And Rob talked about it, you know, jokingly. But can we, can we have a seventh consecutive sellout? Uh, I'm excited to see that, you know, because if people were at the games last year, the St. Mary's game especially, if that wasn't fun, I mean, then I don't know what is. I mean, that, that's as good of a college basketball atmosphere as you'll find in the country. Uh, there wasn't 20,000 people, but it's 9,000 people. Capacity, unbelievable atmosphere, unbelievable energy. I thought the fans last year, and I've been here six, going on seven years now, I thought the fans last year were a little bit more animated, a little bit, had a little bit more energy in the arena last year. And I'm looking forward to that this year. This team will need that type of energy. This team needs to sell out crowds more than last year's team. So get out here and support these guys is, is going to be extremely important. Whether it's Free Hardman Brescia or Old Dominion or Valparaiso, there is no difference. It's Murray State playing and you're out there to support them. Uh, but the schedule is difficult when you look at Old Dominion, Valparaiso, Western Kentucky, a trip to the Charleston Classic, uh, trips to Dayton and Evansville and Arkansas State and uh, Lipscomb right down the road. So, but it'll be good. It'll give our, oppor our team an opportunity to grow, our freshmen a chance to grow to get ready for our opener in conference at Martin on January the 3rd. And uh, got a great TV schedule this year. We're on ESPN, we're on ESPNU, ESPN3, we're on Fox, we're on CBS Sports. I mean, the, 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 the market for TV and the media exposure that we're getting right now and for this season is the best since I've been here. So excited about that and uh, the preseason accolades. Uh, Isaiah and Ed, proud of them. But what I talked to those guys about is, you know, we were picked third in the league last year. You know, we weren't preseason this, we weren't preseason that. We went and earned everything, and that's what we have to do. The preseason honors are great. It's an incredible honor for Isaiah to be named preseason All-American, but now we got to go fulfill all those, um, so to speak, experts right. And I look forward to working with these guys. i got great kids, and uh, looking forward to a great year. Any questions? biggest obstacle you need to overcome for a successful season? Well, we just got to, you know, we've obviously had a lot of adversity. You know, when I was sitting, you know, in the office in April and May, it's not the same basketball team. You know, what I prepared for all summer is not the team that I prepared for right now. Uh, so now, within practice over the last couple weeks, once we knew the final ruling was Zay, now I got to see can we play? How can we play? Can we play like we played last year on the offensive end and the defensive end? Do I need to make adjustments? So I think that's the biggest uh, hurdle right now is knowing how we need to play. And we're going to try to st stick to what we know and st defensively uh, without question that needs to be the staple of our program. And it's been the staple of our program. But then offensively, I want to continue to try to play like we've been playing, but also have a, another route to go if that's not the best thing for this team. And I don't know if we'll know that until we start playing games. Talk about Dexter Fields and how quickly he will kind of get, I guess, get back in the format for having the year sitting out. You know, I think he'll get back in the format. You know, he, in, uh, you know he, he played decent in the scrimmage. He can really shoot the basketball. He didn't shoot it great in the scrimmage but we got good looks for him and he had open shots that he's going to knock down and if he shoots six, seven threes, I'm expecting him to make three, three for six, four for eight, you know, from three. I think he's that very cap I think he's that good of a shooter. Uh, defensively, he's really honed in and understands and wants to be a great defender and has the ability to do it. There's always a transition after sitting out a year and getting back the nerves, the speed of the game, because it's different. Practice to the games are just different. So once he gets through that process, I look forward to having him having a great year for us. Uh, I anticipated him coming off the bench earlier in the year. Now I anticipate him starting. Do you have a defensive stopper to replace you on tomorrow? Uh, right now it's got to be Dexter. I think everybody's got to move. You know, that's the one thing. What Zay and Dexter were our two best defenders. You know, so now I think Dexter moves into that role 
as you know as our premier defender. But I've been excited about Stacy Wilson. I think he's gotten healthier in the off season. He's gotten stronger and he's moving a lot better than he has. Last year, he always his hip was always his hip kind of bothered him. It was couldn't get in a stance that well at times. But I think I've I've been really pleased with his improvement. But Dexter Fields was our guy. We'll we'll start on the, everybody's best defender. I mean, excuse me, best offensive player. Dante Poole, one of the things that he did last year for you in addition to shooting the ball was to get in the passing lanes and come up with steals. Uh, can Stacy do that too? Yeah, I hope so. You know, right now we just, he gambles a lot and Dante gambled a lot. You know, but with those gambles, uh, sometimes it works out good and sometimes it works out bad. But I think he can. He's got to be a little bit more disciplined on the defensive end, but he's moving better. He's understanding our terminology and our rules better to where I think he's going to be a good defender. And we want it when you're going to be good defensively, you need to have two out of those three guys on the perimeter very good, very locked in. So uh, we know we're going to have one in the post with Ed. You know, so one of those two guys in the post, if you can have three out of your five guys really be locked in on the defensive end, I think you got a chance to be good defensively. And with, uh, with Dexter and Stacy, you feel comfortable enough with their ability to score from the perimeter to kind of alleviate some pressure from Isaiah and kind of get him some open looks also at times? Well, that's what we got to see. We hadn't played yet. You know, we've been in practice, and that's, that's one of the things. That, that's, that's, that's a change that we were going through now with, um, you know, I don't want to harp on Zay, but when, when he steps out of the equation, now everybody has to move up a step. Everybody gets a, a chair up. And with that happening, we haven't played any games with that, that lineup. So we've got to play. Uh, the scrimmage gave me a good idea. Um, looking back, and I can't talk too much about that, but that's the thing is those guys are going to have to take some of the offensive load off Isaiah. Uh, Dante did it last year. He was kind of Isaiah's bat, you know how they say Batman Robin. Isaiah was Batman, Dante was Robin. And we go to SEMO, they take Isaiah away in the game. He gets 10 or 12 points while Dante gets, everybody was talking about Dante slumping, Dante's breaking down, and he gets 28 or 27, and we win at SEMO, you know, uh, in a, by 10 or whatever it was. So I just think you got to get into game action to see. Uh, the exhibition will be good just to get in the flow. It's a good opponent, a team that won 20 games last year and only and brings four out of their five starters back. So it won't be a pushover team. Then we'll have our opener and then we'll get hit right, right away with Auburn. You've mentioned people moving up a chair with Zay being gone. Another person that's moving up a chair with Trez being gone is, is Brandon House. He progressed. You know, I thought he did some good things uh, last weekend. Uh, he's going to have to be good, you know, uh, because now, you know, you lose Ivan and then you lose Latrez. So now Brandon's moved into that spot. And sometimes that works out great. You know, when, you know, you hear all the stories, man, somebody goes down, the next guy steps up and it ends up being terrific and he has a great season and a great year. And uh, Brandon has the, op he has the ability to score a little bit around the basket. So that's a positive. He's so long, he's got great length. What needs to happen for Brandon, he's got to have a game or two and play well to really get that confidence going to, to, to excel. Because he did some good things in that stretch when, when Ivan was out and he had to play a lot in those periods. Thought he did some good things. He knows our terminology. He knows how to set ball screens, change angles on ball screens. Uh, he knows rotations defensively. So, um, you know, I'm going to give him all the confidence in the world and, and, and I've got faith in him that he's going to do well. How about Ed Daniels role this year? What has his maturation been like this summer? He's been great. Uh, I've been extremely proud of Ed. Uh, he's handled everything in stride. Uh, if there was, you know, everybody talked about Isaiah last year and, and Dante was so good and, and all our seniors maxed out last year and that's why we were so good. If you look at their stats in their junior year and look at them their senior year, they all maxed out. They all doubled, tripled in, in different stats and they're all so unselfish. But, um, Ed was the glue, and, and people don't realize how good defensively he is. Unbelievable knowing how to rotate, knowing how to block him. He blocks shots, and he'll take charges. Um, he plays, when you put him in Memphis, he plays like he's at Memphis. When you play him against Marquette, he plays that level. Our biggest thing with Ed this year is going to places on the road, like last year at Eastern Illinois, he gets two fouls in five minutes. We can't have him in foul trouble. We need him on the floor because he's our glue. He's our energy on the defensive end. He can change things around the rim. Uh, I mean, he has a ch chance, and I was just looking at the stats, I didn't even know, to 
if he does what he did last year from block shots, he'll he'll be the leading uh, shot blocker in the history of the school. So Ed is Ed has grown and matured. He went to all those camps this summer. He did well. Uh, he's got you know NBA people flirting around with him a little bit. That hopefully that's in his future down the road if he can have a good year. But for our team this year, he's got to defend and rebound in the paint. Offensively, he's got to make great decisions. But his IQ for the game is so good, and he can really pass out of the post. Um, you know, he's been great for us, and I expect another great year. But he was as important as anybody last year for us. How much has Ed helped with the, the development of the younger uh, bigs? He's been great. He takes time. He teaches those guys. He talks to the guys at the side, you know, and visits with them. You know, Ed caught on to things so fast and so quick. I mean, you know, he played eight to ten minutes as a, as a freshman and wanted to play more. You know, I mean, would, would be frustrated if he couldn't, couldn't play more. But he had a great understanding of the game right away. And so he's got to – he's trying to get that back and instill in those guys. And he's been great working with them. Uh, I think he's just ready to play. Um, when I talked to Ed uh, at the end of the summer, he mentioned that uh, during those camps that he had worked a little bit on his perimeter game, his ability to take it out 10 to 12 feet. Mm -hmm. have, have, have you seen any of that thus far in practice? Uh, you know, <laughs> he's, he, you know, Ed 15 feet short corner, if he's open, I'm not, I'm not going to hinder him to shooting a basketball. Uh, you know, he's worked on that 15 feet. That's, that's a good range, short corner, elbow. Um, what he's got to do a good job is in the post facing up and driving guys, you know, and, you know, Ed knows what his role is on this team. He buys in his role. He, he buy, he's, bought, he's bought into his role last year. So we wouldn't have been as so good if he didn't buy into his role. So Ed knows what we need from him. Um, and he, he's made that shot some in practice, but it's not something that he's trying to do all the time. You know, he knows what he needs to do to make this team successful. With Isaiah getting so much attention and so many accolades, are you at a point where you need to kind of rein some of that in or maybe shield some of that as the season starts? Without, you know, I think about our time because you're always saying Isaiah and Ed, Isaiah and Ed, Isaiah and Ed, or then you're just saying Isaiah. And collectively, we have to do this. For this team to be great, it's got to be collective. It's got, we got to have one through 11 really good. You know, 12 and 13 obviously not with us. So 1 through 11 has got to be really good and really locked in. It's going to take everybody because you're, when you're dealing with six freshmen, it could be these two tonight and two nights later it could be the other two. And then the next night it could be the, 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 other, the last two. Uh, you know, Dexter and Stacy are going to have to be so good. We'll be as good as Dexter, Stacy, Brandon, those guys are. So i got to continue to instill confidence in those guys and make sure it's about the team and not individuals. But... We all know Isaiah is very good. Uh, and he's going to be challenged in a whole def lot of ways. This will be his difficult, most difficult challenge in trying to win a championship of all the, if he's fortunate to win a fourth of all four, this will be the toughest test. Uh, he's up to it. There's no question about it. But it's got to be more than just Isaiah and Ed. Among your freshmen, are there any that have looked less of a freshman than the others and kind of floated ahead? Yeah, at times, you know, I don't want to pinpoint anybody, but at times, and then some guys have looked, you know, like they're going to be ready and be able to help us, and then two days later it changes. But that's what you're going to deal with when you're dealing with so many, you know, freshmen. We don't have a junior college player. We didn't bring in a junior college player. Uh, we brought in freshmen because we had seven returners, uh, and we could redshirt guys and different things. So that's not the case now. Uh, so you've got to live with the good and the bad, and the one thing I've got to do with this team even more so with last team is, you know, is let them play, let them play with confidence. And, you know, I'm not a yeller and a screamer. I don't want to be. I want these guys to play, be relaxed, and compete hard on the defensive end and, and get better. And, and once they have some success, some game success, it'll, it'll build, you know. But we've got to have a couple. We, we need one or two of them to step up. When you look back at the freshmen we've had, Zay, Isaiah, Ed, Ivan Aska, those guys, they were game ready when they stepped on that floor as freshmen. And we need, we need a couple of these guys to be game ready because we only have the five older guys. In your second year with some of these adversities, do you see yourself, um, is this a harder year than it was last year being a first? 
Well, they're all hard because you put so much pressure on yourself because it's about the kids, really. And I just met with A today, and you really just want them to have a good senior year. That's the only, that's all I really care about. Um, you know, I want to, that's why I want to win. That's it. You know, and this is a great place. It's a great community. Uh, they're used to winning. They expect to win championships. But you want to coach at a place like that because that's why you coach. You want to win. You want to win championships. You want to make your kids better. But they're all, you know, they all, last year had this different set of pressures. Last year was a, a lot of unknowns. I didn't know, you know, what was going to happen here, what was going to happen here. This time last year, we were dealing, I mean, Latrez is over there. We were dealing with a whole lot of adversity. You know, last year, y'all didn't know about it, but we were. You know, so I was pulling my hair out last year. You know, we won 31 games. So you never know how a season's going to un unfold. We go to Morgan State, we play well, and I'm like, man, we're pretty good. You know, we beat UAB, we're down 12. You know, and I'm like, man. And we go to Alaska and we win, and it, it just snowball from there. So I don't know, you know, the, the pressure's always going to be there internally a lot more than externally. Uh, because of my personality, uh, but at the end of the day, you want these five seniors to go out the right way, and that's all I'm really concerned about.